Welcome back everyone to another Q&A video here on the Back 40 Firewood channel. If this is your first time seeing a Q&A video, you can see right over there. <laughs> uh, if you leave a question or a comment on this video, next week in the weekly Q&A video, I will try to answer it. Uh, I've got the questions already and this week what I'm going to be doing is in the background over on the side action, I'm actually filling some bundles. Um, and making some uh, firewood bags to sell. So with that, let's get right to it. All right, so our first question is from David Edwards. He says, like the new format, still remember wrestlers Joe Scarpa and Sputnik Monroe. I don't even remember those, so. <laughs> um, on the four-way and six-way wedge, how low do you go for splitting so bottom pieces doesn't have to be re-split? Have a safe day. Um, I actually raise the wedge up about three inches off the bottom. Uh, and then that's what I find. Now, sometimes if the piece of, if the round is wider though, I will end up then having to split that again in half because I'll get like an eight inch wide split, eight by three inches, three, three and a half inches. Um, so I will end up having to sometimes re-split those uh, one more time, but usually around three, three and a half inches up from the bottom of the main beam. So Mark Nelson, how old were you when you first ran a chainsaw and what make was it? You know, I am not even sure. Um, I know that my dad always had steels and he had an 06, 061, oh, I forget what it is, <laughs> but um, Maybe it was an 05 one. I don't, now I don't even remember that. <laughs> My memory is going bad. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly how old I was. Um, so I'll have to do some more thinking on that and see if I can figure it out. Um, all right. Thomas Gray. Hey, love the channel. I don't do any firewood processing, but want to after subscribing. <laughs> Question. Let me just get to this here question I gotta is the woodwork your main work or do you also do another job um, yes I the the firewood is just my side uh, hobby my side hustle I do have another uh, 40 hour a week well sometimes more than 40 hours a week job uh, and uh, I've answered this in a few other videos so if you if you want to actually know go back and check out I think last week's Q and A video or the video, the Q and A video before that one. Where do you find your Van Dusen axes in the backyard with Dell? Um, the Van Dusen axes that I have, uh, I've bought a few, but most of those uh, Tim Van Dusen has donated and given to me, um, either as gifts or just donations to the channel. So. But I do have on the back 40 firewoodcom website uh, Van Dusen's, Tim Van Dusen's contact info. So if you do need or want to get a hold of him, send him an email. I know he's pretty busy, but he might be able to squeeze you in if you are really looking to get yourself a Van Dusen X. How much do you would you how much do you charge for a face cord delivered or your other qualities of delivered firewood? Well, actually. I haven't been delivering any. Um, I've started giving some thought to doing a few more deliveries, but just with the smaller quantities of firewood. Um, if I were to deliver a face cord, I would probably ask for at least minimum $90, and that would include delivery within 10 miles, and then anything over 10 miles, like every so many miles, I'd probably add you know, <clears throat> a couple bucks to that. But that's where I would probably start um, but like I said, right now I'm just, I've started offering to deliver like two of the $20 stacks with like a $5 delivery charge. So it would be $45 for a one row across the bed of my truck stacked. And then for bundles, um, I have $8 bundles that includes delivery within 10 miles, a uh, minimum of three. So three bundles, $24 delivery charge, that would be. But yeah, I, I haven't um, really 
gotten into the delivering bulk like face cords or more not yet anyway <clears throat> slick willy good video dan i like the q a so when do you want me to come and help you in the wood yard <laughs> anytime you're ready although with this cold weather we'll maybe wait for it to warm up a little bit gringo pines mr gringo pines how you doing <clears throat> Q&A, uh, I haven't seen any fauna as of late. How are the critters doing in the wood yard? Um, yeah, they, I, the, the deer have been, they're back there just the same. I just haven't, I guess, really shown them that much. Um, now, this time of the year, they are starting to herd up and pack up a little more together. So there's, you know, some days there'll be like groups of, eight, 10, 12 of them walking through. Uh, so there's a lake uh, just south of me and there's a little uh, like freshwater stream that feeds into it, not that far away. So like a lot of the deer are crossing over, heading down to that lake. Um, and that's why they're right. There's like one of their main routes is through the wood yard back there. So that's why there's always a lot of deer activities because that's like one of the main, I guess one of their main paths to take down uh, to the lake. And then, favorite Western viewers besides Daniel Atkins, well, that would be you, my friend, Mr. Gringo Pines. Southwest Woodhound. Soon to be further south, Woodhound. Uh, Tim Thompson. He liked the Ultimate Warrior. Um, then The Rock. On, on average, how long does it take you to make a video? There seems to be quite some time spent doing so. Uh, yes, I would say uh, I probably spend for an eight to ten minute video probably a total of around maybe an hour and a half to two hours and that includes shooting it, editing it, posting it, all the, all the start to finish. Uh, I like to go out and uh, when I know I want to make a video, like kind of have an idea, a game plan in mind, I shoot all the shots. Now it's a little bit easier with two cameras. Uh, and then I bring that in and then I start to edit, put everything together. And then once I feel like I have a finished video, I will watch it at least two to three more times and try to just trim out any, you know, fluff that doesn't need to be there. Um, so yeah, probably uh, sometimes though it takes more than two hours, <laughs> but I would say average hour and a half, two hours for like a 10 minute video, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to, I should keep track of that a little more. I probably don't want to know though how much time I'm actually spending. <laughs> D.A. Eaton. Great format, Shifty. I picked up my first steel chainsaw for home use, MS-180. Nice. That's I had one... Same thing when I first, my, one of my first saws. My question, is there any must-have item on your list besides the normal PPE? I'm only cutting for my personal outdoor burning use. Um, must-have items for in the wood yard. Um, I think just a, one thing that uh, I can think of just off the bat that I always had right from the beginning was just some sort of um, either like a little tote or something to keep all of your stuff together like your files your you know your bar lube your gas can your um, you know two-in-one sharpener uh, maybe your little hatchet uh, your extra chain just something that like a toolbox but that can carry all that stuff uh, so like um, I had, I used to have this little yellow uh, gimmick that you could lay logs on the top and then the, when you flip it over, the bottom was hollow. And so I'd always put all my stuff in there and then carry that around. So I, I think having something that you can keep all of your stuff together and organized in, like I said, two-in-one sharpener, files, extra chain, uh, your scrunch, your uh, maybe, like I said, a little hatchet, all your stuff, get something, you can put it all together and then have that where you can grab it and go and everything's in there fishing with phil 
Enjoy the channel. Thanks. Great to hear that. Appreciate the feedback. I do not heat with wood, but enjoy cutting and splitting. My question is, what size pieces do you use for the bundles? I know 16 inch in length, but was wondering the whole size. Um, well, you can probably see back there behind me or be, uh, to the side of my little talking head here. Generally, I look for between three and five inch average. So like four inch is a sweet spot. Uh, but three and a half, four inch square or triangle, I think, I think that makes the good size for bundles just because uh, you can get a lot of pieces in your bundle. They season quicker, so you can be turning around and making your bundles probably faster. You don't have to let your wood season as much. And I think um, just from that whole, you know, perspective of the customer, when they look in that bag and they see nine, ten pieces of firewood, when they just came from the gas station and saw five or six pieces in a bundle, they're immediately thinking, "Oh, this is a way. This is a great deal." Even though the pieces are a little bit smaller, I think uh, I think people equate quantity more. So, like if they see more pieces, I think they're they're happier, even if some of those pieces are smaller. So three, four, five inch, nothing really over five inches though. That gets to be sometimes just too big of a chunk to cram into the bundles. And like I said, I think it makes the bundles then to where they only have maybe five or six pieces. I don't know, yeah, like you can see over there right now, like some pieces are maybe two and a half, three inch, some are maybe four, just a nice little variety. And I, tell, I should tell you, if I, I think this is my last bundle that I make um, and then what I'm going to do is I had to uh, make a little fire in the wood yard, and you'll see why on Thursday's video. Um, but I want to jump over to that footage after this if uh, we run out of time here. Larry says, enjoy your channel. Have you looked at the wood in the big bags to see if it is dried or molded? Uh, it looks good. I filled about 15 bags this last summer, and I hope they still look good this summer. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm hoping to here once it kind of starts to warm up and some of the snow melts away. But I have peeked in there and I don't, I didn't see any mold. I just haven't gotten anything out to do a moisture test on it. Landon, what's your day job? Uh, again, I covered this in previous Q&A videos. Just real quick, uh, the company I work for, I've been with, I work from home. The company I work for, I've been with for nine years and I've had everything from job titles of right now my current job title is business process analyst and before that I was a web app a web developer application developer graphic design motion graphic um, all, a bunch whole bunch of stuff so nothing firewood related <laughs> Travis cover yes I like this how long do you have to put wood on your outdoor wood boiler two days or are or three days or 12 hours um i think what you're meaning is how often do i fill it i usually fill it twice a day uh gen generally i try to between seven and eight in the morning and then again seven and eight, eight at night so i get right around 12 hours of burn per load unless it's like a span where it's 10 below 20 below wind chill then i might have to fill up like Four, three or four in the afternoon, just throw like one or two pieces in to get through the, because in the evening is when we get a lot of the heat draw off of it from showering and, um, you know, doing laundry or just, you know, <clears throat> it's cooling off at night. The house needs to get warmed up. And like I said, uh, when there's how many of us in the house taking a shower using the hot water, that pulls a lot of heat off the water from the boiler. So then... Generally, in the early evening, seven, eight o'clock, that's when I go out to fill it up because it's it's calling for heat. Michael Foster. Hey, Dan, I enjoy all the videos. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been bundling firewood over 12 years now. I've bundled over 45,000 bundles. Ho, 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 ho. I use a machine to bundle them. Do you think you will switch from bags to wrap anytime soon? Um, <clears throat> I've thought about it. I still have a, 
box full of bags. So for the time being, I am going to stick with the bags. Um, but I have been giving the wrap bundles some thought. And I'll just leave it at that. So you'll have to wait and see which way I go. I have been having a lot of success though with the bags. And I just don't know if I switched how that would work and go over with my current customer base. Kenneth Black. Hey Dan, Ken from Kent, England, across the pond. When you split your wood and you and stack it, do you cover it or leave it in the elements over winter, then cover it in the summer to dry from the rain? Or what's your process in the great films? Cheers. UTB, which means up the borough. <laughs> Middlesbrough borough soccer team. All right, well, I try to, in the winter, cover the stacks. This past winter, I didn't get all of them covered uh, once it snowed, and a few of my tarps blew off in a blizzard we had. Uh, my plan going forward is to have shelters built, permanent structures that I can store the wood in to keep them out of the snow in the winter and out of the snow in the summer. I think in my wood yard, I kind of have two different zones. I have one area that gets a lot of sun and that doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt it so bad when it gets rained on because it dries out pretty quick the next day when the sun comes out. But there are shaded areas of my wood yard that once it gets wet, like if it gets rained on for two or three days, it, it doesn't dry out as quick or as well as I would like it to just because it doesn't get sun and you know it's tough because if you think of a stack of wood uh, water will run down in between the pieces you know and get into every little area it can whereas sunlight can be blocked by the top layer of wood on your stack so that is my plan to just eventually get enough uh, of these little shelters that I'm going to build so I can store almost all of my wood under a roof, a roof, a roof. That's how I'm supposed to say it. <laughs> Out of the elements. <laughs> all right, so the last one we have here is Wingnut50GH. Hey Dan, have you ever have, do you ever have problems with yellow jackets or wasps in your wood piles? Never had a problem till this year, but they were a real menace this year. North Indiana. Well, I have not had them in the wood piles or the wood stacks yet. However, we have had them around the yard, the just around our house, the ground hornets. Where they dig a little hole and they come out and they, the lucky thing is they're not super aggressive. So like if you're, you know, I've like mowed the grass and come within two feet of the nest, but man, they, they can really, yeah, they can become a problem. Um, I always keep on hand in the spring. I go, I'll watch for the sale to happen, and I get like that wasp spray, and I'll buy like five bottles and I'll, <laughs> of that stuff, five cans, and I always have it on hand because if at any point I see some some bees, I take care of them as soon as I can. I've had them in the woodshed, uh, but never in the wood piles or the stacks. So yeah, so you see there, I got a little fire going, um, and that was for a couple reasons. Um, and like I said, I'll explain in Thursday's video. Um, but <clears throat> that'll do it. So again, thanks for the response. Um, I think um, from what I've seen, in the comments at least anyway, everyone's kind of enjoying this little format, so I might keep it like as a weekly series every week to kind of do this. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like I said, stay tuned and see what that fire is all about Thursday's video. Um, so until then, stay safe, have fun, and be cool.